I just got the Klein Tools CL390. It's an AC-DC clamp meter, so it does both types of current, and a multimeter. And it has a cool looking display where it's white text over a black background. So let's put it into amperage. And we're going to measure the current of this light fixture here. So I put my clamp around it, I look at my meter, and I'm really getting nothing. What's going on? Well, this is AC current. So we have current coming into it and current going back out, right? And the sum of that current is zero because we have a sine wave going up and coming down. Anyway, you can't get a current reading on this meter with the load and the neutral side in the same cable. They need to be separated in order to read it. So how do I do that without actually breaking this cable apart? Well, you can do one of two things. You can go out and buy a line splitter, anywhere from 12 to maybe $30 for one of those, or you can make your own. And in this video, that's exactly what we're gonna do. I have an old power cord that is a three prong. It went to, I believe, a compressor. So we're gonna snip that off, put this plug on it, make sure all the connections are correct so that when we plug this into the wall, we get load, neutral, ground. And what we'll do is we're gonna slit the sleeve, expose the conductors, the insulated conductors, and that way we'll be able to select which one we wanna clamp onto without having to tear this one apart. Before actually cutting into the cord, I decided to do a proof of concept on the end of the cord that I wasn't gonna use. And basically, I use this wire stripper and at the very end it just has a blade so I slowly just kind of pinched around it and I also wanted to see if I was going to go too deep because what you don't want to do is you don't want to cut into the insulation of the individual wires that are here and, and by the way that's your neutral because it's white that's your load because it's black and then this is green, and that's your ground. So you don't want to nick or damage the insulation on this when you're trying to get the jacket off. So again, I just kind of snipped around with this edge, basically did a circle, and then I bent the cable, which actually forced it to the jacket to break. And then I used a pair of diagonal cutters and just cut the sleeve all the way across to where I had done another circular cut and just removed the sleeve. Of course, I need to do that and a little bit more on this end. So I'm probably gonna allow myself two to three feet and then decide that the plug's gonna go there and then open up about maybe six inches of material. But I'm not going to attach the plug first because I want to be able to pull the wire out so that it actually will come out and then the sleeve will protect everything else. I've cut off the excess cord, leaving me with a blunt end and of course the plug. And now I'm going to score here and probably maybe about five or six inches away. And this is why you sort of have to practice a little bit because you don't want to nick the wires that are in here. Now, you see I've scored all around it and then if I do this, it just breaks open. So now I'm going to score it here. And again, just, you gotta, you can't go too deep, but you can't go too shallow, and that's the trick. And sorry if you didn't see that. Uh, there, now you see how, see how we're revealing the wires? 
and maybe it needs just a little bit more scoring there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is take my diagonal cutter, and I guess I could try an X-Acto knife, but I feel that this will not damage the wires that are inside. And this probably will be the longest process only because it's just going to be slow. So you're going to cut and you're just going to keep on cutting down this line until you can take this jacket off. And at first it's just little tiny snips, but as you get further into it, your snips can be a little bit bigger. Anyway, I'm not going to bore you with all this snipping. I'll show you what happens when I get to the end of it. Got a couple of inches. I'm going to try just scoring the jacket. And then I'm going to try to pull on it. So I'm not going deep enough to go into the actual cable. I'm just scoring it so that when I pull on this, hopefully it'll split it. Yes. And there you go. And now we're ready to connect our plug. We're going to be working with a 515R. It's a 15 amp rated for 125 volts. Three screws on the face, two on the back to clamp on to the cable. First thing we need to do is loosen these so that we can get into the inside. So we can make a connection with our brand new split cable. With the screws loosened, the apparatus comes apart and here's where our neutral is gonna go because it's the wide blade. And then the smaller blade gets the load and this is gonna be your ground wire. So fairly easy to hook up to. Oh, and make sure to thread the wire through here first before you attach it here. Otherwise, you'll have problems. Using a wire stripper, this is 14 gauge wire. I strip back about an inch of insulation. And then I'm just gonna twist these so I can put them on the screws should end up with something like that. Correction, with this particular plug, the wire does not wrap around the screw head. It instead gets clamped in behind it. With everything tightened down, it should look like this. Insulation right up to the point of attachment and then the bare wire inside. Screw it all the way down, make sure it's tight so it doesn't come loose on you and check all of them. As you see here, We've got a little bit of exposed wiring. Now, if this was ground, I wouldn't care, but this is the load side, so I'm going to have to fix that. But once I fix that, then all we do is put this in place, tighten our screws to lock this part of the plug together, and then we tighten these two screws so that if someone does pull on the cable, the force is taken here instead of being transferred to the wires at the crucial end where they might come out. So hopefully this will be tight enough so that the jacket transfers energy to the outside of the plug and that comes out. So the nice thing about the three screws is that once you get one in, the other two pretty much drop into place and it doesn't take much to drive these in. They're just a couple of turns and they're set. No need to do them super hard. Then when we come to the back of the plug, we want to make sure to drive these down so that they hold the jacket in place. And what I do is I turn them two or three turns each and then just keep on going back and forth until it's all the way cinched. Um, that way the load is, is even on both sides. So before I can actually use this, 
I'm going to need to make sure that load shows up on the load side, neutral on the neutral, ground on the ground. And to do that, I'm going to use my really cool fancy meter here. We've set it to continuity. I removed the high voltage sleeves off of it so the probes are uh, more exposed. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to test the leads, make sure there's not a short in those. That sounds good to me. So I'm going to go into the load side of the plug. Uh, ground pin is going to be down. So then this should be. Oops, it came out. Everybody thought I messed it up. Let's, there we go. So we know that we have a, a circuit on the load side. Nothing should happen on the neutral and nothing should happen on the ground. Okay, so now we switch and we're gonna go over to the neutral side of the plug. So that should be this prong here. It should not be this prong and it certainly shouldn't be this prong. So, so far so good. And you know, you can test neutral first and load or ground, doesn't matter. And let's see if we can get ground to work. So we touch ground. Uh, let's see. Yeah, come on, you can do it. It's just having a hard time getting in there. Come on. Uh, But, come on, we can make this work. Uh, let's see if I go up inside the plug. There we go. So we have ground, nothing on the load side, and nothing on the neutral side. So we know our wiring is correct, and now we're gonna be able to test for amperage, cool. A quick safety precaution, whenever you're using the clamp portion of the meter, make sure there are no leads connected down here. With our line splitter plugged into a power source, I've attached the other end to the plug that goes to this light. And now we're gonna put our meter into 40 amp mode. I'm going to make sure that it's not on AC, that it's not on DC, it's on AC. Um, normally it defaults to AC. And you see that we're picking up just a, a little deflection there. And that's just because this is like an antenna. So it's picking up like electromagnetic fields and, you know, they're just everywhere in the air. So you'll get a little bit of rolling off. And this zero function actually only works with the DC mode. So we, if we were measuring DC current, then we could actually zero out that number. But for AC, you're just gonna get that slight fluctuation. We come over, we open our clamp, we go to the load side, which is our black. And unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to put it in the perfect vertical horizontal position perpendicular to the coils, but we will get a reading of 0.1516 looks like. So about there, um, if I move it over, I can show you that if I kill the power, that drops down to again, so to what's just in the air, you know. So don't worry too much about that. We come back on, we switch it, and we're back into that 0.115. So our little uh, line splitter has worked perfectly and we can use this to measure power going into a refrigerator, a motor, any electrical device that you need to determine what the amperage is being used without danger of exposing yourself to that amperage and potentially hurting or killing yourself. You may be curious to know, what happens if I hook this up to the neutral? Well, let's 
let's hook it up to the neutral and find out. There's our reading. And you shouldn't be surprised because there's power going in one line and out the other. And that would be that same reading. Well, let's let's try ground, shall we? I'm just gonna go in between the wires, snag, snag that ground there. And we're just reading what's in the air because there is nothing or there should be nothing on the ground. If you do, if you do detect current on the ground, then you have a serious problem to deal with. Building a simple line splitter will add to the usefulness of your AC clamp meter. If you found this video interesting or useful, leave us a comment, give us a thumbs up. Join the subscription team. And as always, thank you so much for watching.